Hi there and welcome to the Maya Learning Channel. In the previous video I showed you how to use EXR maps to create raindrop ripples on a watery surface. In this video I'll show you how to generate reflection waves like you'd see in a shallow stream. As always, big thanks to Diego Trazzi on whose work these tutorials are based. As you can see, I'll be starting with a scene that contains our usual lighting environment, just with a different HDR image, a polygon plane, and some rocks and trees for a collision. In this case, we're starting with a pretty low number of subdivisions, just to keep performance up. As usual, I'll start by selecting the plane and using the boss editor to create some spectral waves. Then I'll add some horizontal displacement, and increase the wave size to sharpen the crests a bit. This time I'm also going to add some drift velocity in X. This will give me a very deliberate flow in the X direction. And finally I'll lower the ocean depth to 10 since we're simulating a shallower body of water this time. Now I'll just select my tree and rocks and add them as influences. This will add each object as its own influence. In this case, I can turn off the generators too, since I'm only interested in the collisions. This is like the rain collider we generated at the end of the last movie. Now if I play again, I should see crests and dips forming around our objects. Except I don't see much of anything at the moment. The problem is my reflections are getting lost in my spectral waves, so I'll turn up the reflection height a bit to make them bigger. There they are. To speed up the scene, I can cache my influences. However, remember in the previous movie how the Geo Properties cache represented where the raindrops hit the water? Well, notice that in this case our impact points aren't changing, because the tree and rocks are static. That means that I can actually use just one cache file for each of them. To generate a single image file, I'll scroll down to the cache attributes, and remove this frame tag. Then I'll turn on export cache, and play a single frame. Now if I go to the cache folder, I should see a single cache file for my tree, without a frame number. Now I'll just do the same for my rocks. In this case though, notice how the row of rocks is a lot longer in Z than it is in X. To better capture this, I'm going to double the resolution in Z for this particular cache before outputting. And once both influences are cached, I'll just set boss to use them. There, much faster. The bulk of the work is actually done now. The only thing left to do is make some adjustments to the spectral wave node. I already increased the reflection height, so I'll leave that alone. I could also increase the reflection size if I wanted to sharpen these ripples. I happen to like them a little round though. Another thing you might notice is that the two stones at the bottom of my simulation are generating weaker reflection waves than usual. This is due to the decay width and alpha values, which suppress waves as they approach the edge of the simulation space, so that they don't reflect back into the simulation. However, they're a little too high right now. See? Much better. The rest of these reflection attributes affect the length and direction of the reflection waves. Friction determines the amount of resistance the waves encounter on their way to the edge of the simulation, while drift factor and wind factor multiply the effects of their respective forces. So a high friction with low drift and wind will result in short reflection waves, whereas low friction with high drift and wind will result in longer ones. In this case, the defaults are fine. 
The last attribute is an interesting one. It controls the size of the reflection caused by colliders breaking the water's surface tension. Unfortunately, the mesh I'm using now is much too low res to see its effects. Now I could just add subdivisions to the original polyplane like we've been doing, but suppose I wanted to keep the low res mesh around for further tweaking. Instead, I can create an entirely new plane, exactly the same size, but quadruple the subdivisions. Then I can go back to the boss editor and click Replace Domain for All. This swaps the low-res plane for the high-res one, but keeps the old one around in case we want to switch back later. And now you can definitely see the capillary waves spreading out from our colliders. Now I'll just apply a new Arnold shader. And this time apply a clear water preset. And now I can render a frame. or the entire sequence. 